All right, everyone. Last looks. Quiet on set. Roll sound. Sound speed. Roll camera. Camera speed. Scene one, take one. Mark it. And action. Hi, I'm Ed, the host of Savannah on Film, and we explore the economic and cultural impact and values of the film industry in Savannah through conversations with people who work in the industry and related fields. You can find us here on WRUULP, Savannah, Georgia, 107.5 FM, WRUU.org. We are Savannah Sounds, community radio with global soul. Welcome to another exciting, and I promise you, excitingly awesome episode here of Savannah on Film. And we're here on um, WRU 107.5 FMLP, Savannah Soundings, community radio with Global Soul. And we are for the second year here at WRU, been voted in the Connect Savannah as best talk radio so yay 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 pat ourselves on the back here and um this is savannah on film i'm your host ed susevich and our purpose here is to explore the economic and cultural impact of the film industry in savannah and beyond through conversations with people who work in the industry and related fields my guest today finally returning to the show here is ryan sully sullivan and um (laughs) He is um, a supervising sound editor, sound editor, sound designer, uh, re-recording mixer and music composer. He's worked in film and television, commercials, podcasts, one of my favorite things, and many other forms of media. He pretty much does it all. And he even is the owner of Ryan Sullivan Sound based in Los Angeles, California, world away. <laughs> so um, uh, he's joining us from Los Angeles now. Um, and uh, Ryan's, uh, he's, he's a man of uh, many talents. And I do have a lot of people that I'm fortunate enough doing this show that I, I get to see a bit of their development and how they're going along through their careers. And Ryan's one of those people when, when I kind of caught hold of him first and in, 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 in when he was going to uh, Savannah College of Art and Design and I was researching him like, this is a very talented individual. I know this guy is going to go far. Um, and um, he, he is, he's making his dreams come true every day. And um, he's a business owner. And um, I, I like what, um, what you're um, it says here that you, it says, uh, quote, let's work together to bring your vision to life through the power of sound. And mm-hmm. uh, that that's that says it all. And um, welcome to the show, Ryan. All right. Thank you so much. Yeah. Um, so uh, you've got a lot. We've got a lot of things to talk about. Um, uh, he's known for uh, the left right game nesting dolls medical police odyssey a star wars story uh if you can see the video here if when you watch the video on youtube at stand on film you'll see my backdrop always has a lot of star wars um, everything else there so um um but anyway um 
we I think we're both Star Wars fans. I'm sure. I'm mean, sure. Yeah, you of course. Be yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course. You did on Odyssey, and uh, that was um, Mark uh, votes. Yes, so, Mark right? vote. Yeah. Yeah. And um, have have you have you talked with him recently? Or uh, he's actually one of my roommates here in LA. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, that's <laughs> yep, he, so. I, I see i see things on instagram but i don't know how everybody's connected. yeah 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 for sure so so that's great um so y'all are out there taking those wonderful degrees that you got and that and that knowledge and putting it to good use and um uh, and, and working on some fabulous projects um so i i know nothing better to do than just talk about jump right into what you're working on um sure. So uh, I want to hit up one of my favorite things here are, um, well, let's actually start with a feature film. I was going to get the podcast, but we'll, we'll get to that later. Um, let's talk about how to deter a robber, the feature film. Mm-hmm. Um, what, what are your thoughts about that? Is um, what, what went, do you want to tell us, can you tell us a little bit about, it? yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't yeah, know. yeah, yeah. The, the film what? is, uh, I guess is, going to be released um but it had a premiere at a uh, festival recently fantastic fest um but uh yeah so uh the best way to describe how to deter a robber is a uh home alone story but mm-hmm. if it was rated r so okay. um it's got the same kind of uh, like coming of age um i guess uh, story in terms of of how like the home alone movie went and mm-hmm. how this movie goes except um with how to deter a robber it's you know there's these robbers that are in uh, i guess it wisconsin and they're going around different houses and wrecking people's houses up and then these two kids figure out that they're gonna get robbed or you know there is robbers and so it's during christmas time um and so they basically hatch plans to do these home alone esque <laughs> like you know tricks and all of these uh all of these um traps and stuff for to catch these robbers um but it's it's a very very funny film it's a very uh it's very fun it's definitely one that you're gonna like uh sit down and like get a thing of popcorn and like be by the end of it be like yeah that was that was fun um so the, did you um you did sound design on it i imagine or? yeah so i i was the uh sound editor um sound editor. for it so i cut the uh backgrounds and you know sound effects um and some foley um but my uh supervisor is a man named matt yokum who's a good friend of mine and a mm-hmm. uh, mentor of mine hmm, interesting um foley is a lot of fun isn't it <laughs> yeah yeah i i as uh in terms of foley for that i mainly like was cutting stuff because it's you know if if you know someone picks up a a cup or something or opening like a drawer or anything you know it sometimes helps foley out um if i also cut that you know gives the mixer options but it also um you know it helps helps foley focus on the things that truly fully needs to focus on like footsteps and cloth and stuff Hmm. so um what is the last manhunt about oh yeah so the last manhunt is a true story uh it's it was quite literally about what people deemed as the last manhunt um it which has happened in 1900 Oh, geez, I'm going to get the date wrong. So I'm just going to say any in the 1900s, 19, early 1900s, like nine, yeah, early, like 1906, I think, or something. Um, I'm, I'm going to get that wrong. <laughs> um, but uh, it's basically about these uh, two. There's this man from a Native American tribe and this woman from a Native American tribe. And these two tribes don't get along very well. Um, but there's these. Um, but this one. Um, Native American man basically and this Native American woman run away together across um, basically uh, Southern California and down into New Mexico. Um, and it's about a posse that basically gets together to track them down and I guess bring them back. Um, but the Native American man is named Willie Boy. Um, and, mm-hmm. you know, he's 
always he's he's caused trouble i guess in the past so basically it's a it's a western movie um uh, basically about uh yeah I, I basically about what i i guess just described just be people running away kind of it's this nice love mm. and it's story, based but... at 1909 1909 there we go right. yeah now oh, um, so close unless this is a different person um story by jason momoa is that, is that correct yeah that is true yeah wow yeah. interesting um, yeah he's yeah it's cool it's he's also in the film as well and uh oops i lost it there i was just looking at it real quick um do, 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 do. okay um <laughs> you push too many buttons and you've gone too far so uh, that sounds interesting and um what what were some like unique challenges that that you maybe had on this particular film were there some yeah the biggest one being horses uh <laughs> i you know it's as a, a sound editor and someone working in film there's always like the thing you hear that horses are going to be like really hard or there's certain things like certain sounds you're gonna, always going to hear are going to be like really hard right and it was like yeah okay and, you know there's <laughs> there's a famous sure. article written by a sound designer alan splett um, he did like David Lynch movies, but he, he was doing um, The Black Stallion and he wrote about how he recorded horses, how he edited horses um, and the, their footsteps and everything. I read it and I was like, okay, cool. It's like, you know, horses. Okay. It's just horses. And then, yeah. And then so I get to, to this, to a Western movie where you, you bet there's going to be horses. Like there's always going to be horses. And um, yeah, I mean, it's just a lot because we we didn't foley the horses so uh i cut all of the horses footsteps i cut their breathing and i cut all the like bridles on them uh so that took a lot of work and um going footstep by footstep sometimes is very very tedious what's what's the hardest part of of your job or that's too broad of a question i guess um it's i'm sure it changes from pro- project to project from from film to film yeah um, it, i guess it just depends upon the story and what what they're what you're after um so <laughs> horses are the worst things to work with or <laughs> well it's just so yeah it's just that was the most challenging by far uh there's you know times where i was up at night you know just like oh come on i'm cutting hours upon hours of horses so um yeah sometimes it's nice you know there's like a shootout scene and um you know that's the like that's the nice uh, like uh i guess that's the candy you would say in in the film where it's like oh everyone wants everyone wants to do a good like you know wild west shootout scene uh but funnily enough is like uh once again, my supervisor was Matt Yoakum, as I meant, uh, as I mentioned with How to Turn Robber, and and I got the sessions from him, and he had already done all of the shootout scene, so <laughs> so I was like, come on, man, but but um, but no, I mean, it sounds really amazing, um, but yeah, I mean, I I love, I I got a greater appreciation for how to cut horses, and I learned a lot in terms of it's like a very specific, uh. I guess you could say sound editorial skill now is like what makes a good horse and what makes a good horse um what makes a horse sound like a horse you know? yeah right yeah so um in that film i think it was hard um i think it, to answer i know the question was quite broad but to answer your question with what's usually the hardest part of my job um and i would probably say sometimes it's trying to convey uh it's trying to take notes or notes of from someone who doesn't sometimes think about sound like you know a sound editor or sound designer does and trying to translate them into uh sound so if someone is a writer or you know a cinematographer um, by trade but is directing a film or writing a film or producer or whatever you know sometimes the way they think about things or the knowledge that they have um i guess vocabulary that they have might not be the same as how we as sound designers have so it's so i guess the difficulty is is sometimes figuring out okay what are they trying to say 
and how do I convey that via sound? So if someone says, I want it to sound red, which is actually a famous story of, of uh, I forget what director it was, but someone's, someone just said, I want this to all sound red. And he's like, okay, so I got to figure out what red means. Um, red could be like angst. It could be anger. Yeah, like anger maybe. It's, you know, that's the thing. It's like, it can be, it's got to figure out what, what is it, what does red mean to that person, um, to the director? So I guess that could be, you know, it's, it's one of the like toughest parts. It's speaking a different language because you, you probably, I mean, I'm a sound mixer, so I understand I get, I see, I see sound in, in, in pictures, as so to speak, you know. Yeah. And and, and I, I know you, I know you have to, and they see, they probably see pictures first before they see the sound. Yeah. And and it it's like you've got to learn to interpret what their vision is. And have you ever come up with something that, that they said, wow, I, I hadn't thought of it that way. Have you ever kind of changed any minds, you know, and with your talents and said, you know, I know you think this sounds, this is how you think you want this to sound, but really I think this little extra bit will make it sound even better. I mean, have you had a situation like that or? Yeah, there's definitely been a lot of times I think when I'm like, yeah, oh, this would be, uh, there's a lot of times where I, you know, I, I watched something and I was like, oh, this would be great there and be surprised and be happy that, you know, a director had already been thinking about that. Or sometimes, you know, it does feel really nice to be like, oh, I have a really good idea and I can feel like I can do it pretty well. And, you know, I, the best thing that can happen to us is, you know, you give someone a first pass of your sound effects or sound design and, mm -hmm. uh, mix or whatever and there's like no notes or there's barely any notes because that means like yes. you really hit it yeah, out of the, the part experiment yeah yeah totally and i mean i'm doing a film feature right now um that is very like uh surreal very abstract and you know there's a lot of room for notes but it's been wonderful because um because there hasn't been uh not a lot of notes most of the notes that i get you know i see four pages of notes and i'm like oh god okay let's work <laughs> through them but most of them are just the director like complimenting the sound and so that's always really nice that's, that's always a good thing to hear. yeah it's always really nice to be like wow so these four pages of notes are actually just like you know a page and a half of real critique um but the other ones are just good job and sometimes and, and it's very nice have you um, ever had the, and without naming names, have you ever had the opposite where they were like, you know, <laughs> they marked out in red, in fact. Yeah, yeah, there's been <laughs> many red. times, there's been many times where, uh, I mean, it's a thing that happens a lot um, sometimes, but people, the directors, if they've been sitting in an editing room for so long, especially if it's a long feature film, or if they're even the editor, they're going to have temp love, so they're going to love whatever's temporary sound effect or temporary music that they had already put in there and so there's there was a time that i i did a film quite recently actually and um you know it was 25 minutes or so so it's not too long but it's still you know pretty decent right it's pretty long for short right. and um and i i did all the sound design and added new backgrounds added new sounds created created a bunch of like cinematic kind of effects so like you know uh, hits and wishes and stuff like that and then by the end of this film all of the temporary sound effects that they gave me were put back in and my stuff was like muted and it was like oh <laughs> it was like okay that's fine i mean i mean at the end of the day it's like um you know my job is to to serve you know what you're trying to convey that the director or producer is trying to convey and you know that's that's fine by me it's you know maybe my it's it's there's a lot of merit in thinking you know i watch a film and i think of a story this way and then you know the director is like no I, I actually think of it a different way there's a lot of merit because you know there's uh, someone's always going to have an idea that you you're not thinking of um and can always want to convey a film in a different light i guess um but yeah i mean that that was i don't know i mean that 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 was like okay but you know 
I I know that it's gonna happen. Um, but yeah, I think that 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 would be good. I guess example. Yeah, it, it's kind of like you, you have your your own idea of what the child's going to become, and then yeah. <laughs> they have their idea, and you you present them this child, and you're like, no, I didn't. That's not what I wanted, or or you know, here, change this, change that. And it's it's give and take, and obviously they they end up winning in the end. But <laughs> the director, but uh, yeah, the vision. But um, is it is it hard? So I I know it is, but is is it hard to let go of like like if you had a certain certain way you you mixed it and, and you're like they take that away just that that little part is like a little thing that's what i'm getting at is like your signature because i think your personality comes through in, in one's work you know so you kind of want to put your stamp on it a little bit and say, yeah yeah you know no, like totally. when you go through films oh, well i did this special thing you know it's like um uh, and this is a terrible example, but all I can think of is like Ice Ice Baby where they go, it's the little ting that makes the difference. Yeah, <laughs> <You know? laughs> that makes it different. Yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah. But uh, it's all about the little ting. Yeah. <laughs> you know? It's not the same. No. But uh, have, have you, have you, have you, have you had to just like say, oh man, it's just, um, well, you said that they put like the temporary stuff in there and they took your good stuff out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and then yeah, they took it out. I mean, yeah, there's definitely been times. I mean, my biggest thing is, um, I mean, one thing that I, I guess I started to, uh, I get started to get asked a lot when I was coming to LA, um, hmm. in my like junior year and senior year was, um, I would get asked like, what makes me special? Like, what's 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 my thing? As people would say. Okay. Uh, you know, and what, what, what do you, when can you bring to the table? That's like pretty unique. And so, you know, it shifts all the time, but one of the things is um, because of that, I always said to myself, now it's okay. Every project I'm going to do, I'm going to create, you know, at least 10 of my own so you know, Easter sound egg. designs or the sound effects. Design Easter eggs. <laughs> <laughs> so, so that's when it gets hard is i'm fine of taking out whatever you know it, i'm fine of taking out backgrounds and taking out effects that I, I cut or you know i can spend you know up until like wait you know spending cutting up until 3 a.m and i'm fine of taking that out but it gets hard when you spend like you know an hour creating like a effect or like um and you and know. then you and then it, it, it's on the cutting room floor you know and you're kind of like yeah and then you're like they're you know it's just once it, it what hurts the most sometimes is when you have like a bunch of notes and you know just what stuff that goes really into detail mm -hmm. and then they just have like one sentence that says ah i don't like this take it out and it's just like, like oh my god that's the opus right there that's oh, <laughs> yeah oh dare you <laughs> but uh oh my gosh um well uh so so what was i gonna say um i'm never the lost words but i'm in the lost words right now i'm trying to think of an example um but yeah let letting go of it knowing um when to let go and mm -hmm. is, is I, I know it can be difficult and and people people that are that way about cinematography or you know the way sound is yeah, like, yeah. out you know sound we we see in sound uh, you know i kind of say it that way yeah um, totally you know and and um it's it's like we have a different language altogether and it's you know we, we can paint a picture with sound and that's that's the idea it's like one of the sounds i really love the most is the sound of gravel like somebody yeah the gravel. The textural it's just I, I really satisfying that, you know and it's and, and and it can be, it can be an ominous sound depending how you depict it, or it can, it can be something that's you know maybe somebody walking you know the gravel to like a road like right to the beach or something. So it's, it's it's interesting how you can you can start with that little that little sound and you can bi you build a world around it and and it can be you know whatever the story needs it to be, but. Um, things like that i mean I, I really pick up on that it's like you know um theaters still aren't where they need to be you know you know when we can go to them and uh um 
it's like I I, I love I love the whole I I love the sound. We were talking about this I think probably before we started, but Tenant. Um, I got yeah. to actually see that in theater, and and not to take away from. Um, I almost said James Cameron, not James Cameron. Uh, uh, Christopher Nolan. Christopher Nolan. I, I was just watching the one of the Terminator films. That's what I got. Oh, oh, I see. Cameron on the yeah, brain. Was, they're talking about Chris how, well, how they're filming stuff, and um, one of the actresses she broke the underwater record that Tom Cruise held for holding your breath. Oh, like yeah, nine minutes. Um, so yeah, Christopher Nolan. I mean, I think of the Dark Knight. I think of that the subtlety of how that film begins and just the little sound you know those those delicate yeah. sounds when they're when they're 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 break smashing the window and then they the they go across to the other building and you know how that builds up and then and of course but like when i saw tenant you know it's very bombastic it's it's just almost deafening and and i know you're not a fan of, of bombast and not not to to criticize nolan but um because I've got enough Oscars, his, his sound team um, under their belt. And so they must know what they're doing. But I mean, it's, I think it's just a, an opinion of, 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 of what, you know, a person likes versus someone else. But there, I think you're more of, of the subtleties. You, you, you like the subtleties. Is that fair to say? Yeah, I guess the biggest thing is, I guess I like uh, dynamics in terms of, I like when things are really quiet and i like when things can be really loud but when it's one kind of through a line of it's really loud or it's really quiet you know it gets um it gets boring because the thing is there's no there's no variation uh you know you want things to be if you have a sound effect you know you want to have the you know a punch for example right you know you want to have the element that is the low you know kind of thud you want the mids which is kind of the like real kind of meaty like texture of it and then the highs which is kind of like the slap you know you want all of those elements together there to be um i guess to to work together and have dynamics in terms of volume but also in terms of uh variation in frequency Okay, I I hear what you're going with, but we need to put this orchestra on top of that. Is that okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, the thing is, is we're gonna put it on eleven. Turn the volume up to eleven. Yeah, I mean, the thing with Christopher Nolan films is, I absolutely adore their sound team. I I love Richard King, who is the supervising sound editor. I love his work, Uh, and they are really at the top of the level. It's the thing is, is it really comes down to how Christopher Nolan is deciding to do things. Uh, he was extremely intentional about almost every portion of that movie, the sound design and, and everything. He was, yeah. I heard he was extremely involved in it and he had definite points that he wanted to hit with, with the sound mix there of it, of the film. And, uh, you know, I, th- I guess maybe that's a little bit more micromanaging than, I don't know, you know, maybe, maybe George Lucas is different. Maybe he's, you know, he's got his ideas, but he's like, you know, okay. Um, I trust you, John Williams here, here, <laughs> you know, put your yeah. story on there and uh, all you gotta do is play the star Wars theme or Vader's theme and we're good. <laughs> no, it's much no, more. Totally, complicated yeah. Than it, but, yeah. But. I mean, even, uh, I mean, even with Ben Burt, uh, sound designer of Star Wars and stuff. I mean, he originally started by just going, "We okay, we're making a, we're making a space movie, right? But yeah. we want everything to sound organic in it." And so, it's a space. That was that was like that was the main. You know, it wasn't like I need this to be made out of that. And it was Ben Burt who then went off and was like, "Okay, cool. How do I, how do I do that?" And they're like, "Okay, well, we're gonna make a bunch of weird, crazy space sounds, but they're all derived from." nature so which yeah. it became the whole aesthetic for skywalker sound which is um, a Revolution. big old facility and post house up in northern california um probably does you know if if it's if you have a favorite movie they probably did the sound for it um <laughs> industrial light magic yeah like they yeah been, yeah they and um and it's not but really i mean without them <laughs> yeah totally but i mean they created their kind of own 
uh, aesthetic and owned kind of uh, school of thought, I would say, in terms of everywhere from how they do Foley. Um, and, you know, they want their Foley to sound very uh, big and beefy. Um, and, you know, all of their whole design process is starting from uh, if they want to make a crazy space laser, they're going to go from uh, an organic element rather than a synthetic one, like a synth or something. So, okay. Well, we're going to, we'll have to break uh, for a few announcements here. Um, uh, everybody stay where you're at. Um, and we're going to come back and I'm going to ask you, one of the things I'm going to ask you is what is your favorite genre of film? So oh, okay. the, the, yeah, let's, let's narrow that down. I'm sure I'm yeah, sure yeah. That's enough question. But we'll be back in just a moment here with uh, Ryan Sullivan of Ryan Sullivan Sound and here on um, Savannah on Film. So we'll be back. Hold on. Thank you to everyone who made a financial contribution during this year's on-air membership campaign for WRUU. Because of your generosity, we're able to continue bringing you the music and talk programs you've come to expect. And we're back on the air with our regular programming. That's what we're all about. Now, if you've somehow missed the campaign, well, you can donate anytime at wruu.org. Donations keep us going. Thanks for your financial support of Savannah's best local talk radio as voted by readers in the most recent Connect Savannah poll, WRUU 107.5 FM. All of us here at the station greatly appreciate what you, the community, do to make Community Radio 107.5 possible. Here's to another great year of radio. This is a message from the Georgia State Department of Public Health. Social distancing means minimizing contact with people. It also means that if you are near someone in public, try to stay at least six feet away. The less contact people have with one another means the less opportunity for the virus to spread. Slowing the spread of the virus means that we can keep our health care system from becoming overwhelmed. More information can be found at dph.georgia.gov. Disasters don't stop even during a pandemic. The Red Cross is here to help when disasters strike. They respond to a disaster every eight minutes. They help people to prepare for disasters and they help prevent disasters such as home fires. The Red Cross saves lives by providing blood. And now free COVID-19 antibody testing is available when donating blood with a Red Cross. More information about Red Cross services and donating blood can be found at www.redcross.org. WRU listeners like you crave exploration and discovery. That's how we can offer your business or organization a unique way to separate your name from the clutter inherent in commercial radio advertising. Underwriting on non-commercial WRUU will make your name stand out because we allow only a limited number of sponsorships per hour. And your message will be reaching listeners who are actively engaged in programs that demand their attention. Let our team build a customized plan to meet your marketing goals by linking your name to our unique music and talk programs. For more information, email underwriting at wruu.org. You're listening to WRUULP, Savannah, Georgia, 107.5 FM, WRUU.org. We are Savannah Soundings, community radio with global soul. Thank you to all of our loyal listeners who made donations during last month's WRUU Pledge Drive. While the on-air Pledge Drive has come to an end, we are excited to announce a surprise bonus round where those who still wish to give or give more can do so with a chance of winning a unique gift. Local artist David Laughlin has created a series of uniquely painted vintage vinyl records that are available for bid in an online silent auction. Each of these one-of-a-kind records is mounted in a beautifully matted UV-protected frame. Bidding opens Monday, November 2nd, and closes on November 14th at the link www.32auctions.com slash WRUU. Again, that auction link is www.32auctions.com slash WRUU. And if you could not write that down fast enough, 
The auction URL can be found at our website, www.wruu.org. All proceeds from these ornamental record sales go towards supporting WRUU Community Radio. Thank you again for listening to and supporting WRUU. And we are back here on Savannah on Film and those uh, wonderful announcements we had there. Um, WRUU was in the Connect Savannah um, poll where we were voted in, in Savannah here. We were voted for the second year in a row as number one talk radio. So we're super excited about that um, at WRUU. And thank you, the listeners, for voting on that. And and to everybody that's listening worldwide, we're here on Savannah on Film. And I've got Ryan Sullivan of uh, Ryan Sullivan Sound, which we're going to talk about in a second. But um, as promised, what's your favorite genre of film or favorite to work in or just favorite or yeah uh well well film is a wonderful diverse (laughs) uh art form so you know kind of love it all but if there's definitely one thing i'm uh you know story-wise just i think story-wise i think science fiction will always be kind of my biggest thing um what drives you to that i think it's because it combines i mean if i feel like you know drama and comedy are like the most basic forms of you know like a story right people just i know i know so i know (laughs) but no what i mean is like drama and comedy are like you know you you expand from there right so science fiction can be comedy it can be drama um but I think what I love about science fiction, especially uh, beginning in like literature, it's like it all started from creating these imaginative worlds and imaginative ideas to talk about like issues and like whether that be political or social or whatever. Um, X Men, dreamed- X Men, I mean, like the comics and 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 the the films dealt with stuff like that. They pulled from that, you know, a lot of good good yeah. sci- sci-fi uh star trek i mean pulls a lot from yeah yeah totally yeah, yeah i mean it, it would be uh it would be very it'd be very dumb to think that star trek isn't um i mean star trek is yeah i mean is probably one of the most looked at uh you know series or movies you can even say that are um some would say i've th- always pushed a thinking man's um science fiction yeah yeah i mean i as someone who has recently uh gotten into watching the next generation for like the first time i was like man i really feel like i slept on all of this here Mm -hmm. uh so um but yeah i mean i I don't know i mean i in terms of working on stuff i would say like every genre i mean i there's definitely you know it's fun when i can do like science fiction stuff and horror and stuff but you know, working on a Western was, was like on my bucket list. I always wanted to do that. And I think honestly, like every genre of film is kind of on my bucket list. Cause so, you know, so if, you get to work on the Mandalorian. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, know, yeah, for sure. What that, that experience is like. Yeah. It'd be crazy, experience. man. Yeah. But, yeah. I mean, I, uh, Hey, I would, um, gladly, if anyone was listening, uh, I would gladly love to work on that. So for uh, sure. I'll talk to George and see what I can do. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. Someone, yeah. Anyone, anyone at Skywalker Sound, if if they're listening. So if somebody's yeah. looking for a good sound editor, you, you've formed your your own business, uh, Ryan Sullivan Sound. So yeah. tell us a little bit about that. Uh, first up, I know it can be found for everybody. It's a simple address, uh, so you won't forget it. It's RyanSullivanSound dot com. Yep. <laughs> Very simple. Yeah. Um, Even so. Yeah. That's. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean. Yeah. It could have been. I mean. It used to actually be Ryan Sullivan Sound Design, and I was like, ah, don't need this design. Can get rid of that one. Um, just Sound. make it simple. Yeah. So, yeah. so tell us about it, Ryan Sullivan Sound. Yeah. So, um, I mean, I was for a while uh, towards the end of school at SCAD. I was like, what am I gonna? Because I had inter- internships in in. Um, LA here for studios at studios and you know and then I knew of people that were freelance sound people here in LA and I had you know I had come out here in winter of 
geez i guess that was winter of my senior year yeah winter of my senior year and a lot of that time was just talking to people that were freelance and also part of studios and i was also somewhat working at the time in la and just kind of like getting the lay of the land in terms of like what you know what what separates you know someone working freelance someone working as a studio mm-hmm. and what do i want to choose and the thing that ultimately came down to is i i want to choose freelance because um one i can i can actively like i could hop around to different studios um you know per project because how freelancers work uh, typically in terms of i guess at least i hear in, in sound world is you know we go from project per project or you know a group by group um and so i was like cool so i came out here um when scad i guess shut down and covid covid was starting to come up um so that was like early early march i think um and um or even before that uh anyways uh, so I came out here and started work and, and finished up the rest of my school year, but I was also working. So I was part-time working and then I went to full-time being a freelancer. And so I made the company just as um, one as because I'm a freelancer. So, um, so I, I will do your projects. <laughs> so, it's, you know, it's, it's, so, that's why I guess why I made it. I guess the question is why you, why, 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 if I, if I'm coming to you, why do I need Ryan Sullivan sound on my film project? What do you bring to the table? Uh, you know, special. Uh, I think the thing, I think that it's pretty um, unique to me. And it's the thing that I always got asked about, mm-hmm. you know, when I was mentioning about people were asking me what makes right. you special. And the thing is, is I was an actor for most of my life up until I went to school and I always tried and I was doing mostly theater sound design. That's how I started. And um, there's a lot I took away from that in terms of uh, sound has a different kind of experience when you're in a theater. I think it, it it's much more, um, I mean, it's in terms of when you're in a theatrical play because how you create sounds and the process of it and how you think about sounds and how sound even gets played because a sound designer in theater is also the someone who creates the sound system for a theater. Um, it's not just like uh, movies where, you know, I'm going to mix this in, you know, a Sony stage where there's, you know, hundreds of speakers that's always been here and everyone knows it. And, you know, it's like you can replicate that you theater in some way. The system there. Yeah. Yeah. Well, in a theater sound designer, you kind of create your own. Right. Um, and so there's a lot of way, and, you know, I explored the ideas of, you know, putting speakers on stage and putting them above you and stuff like all that um and so a lot of that i i took away in terms of like the power quite literally the power of sound in theater is is pretty huge because it has to be incredibly convincing um yeah incredibly convincing it can't just be you only get one take (laughs) yeah (laughs) no take so so how you and how you use it in terms of the actor's performance and stuff like that you know it is is sometimes quite um, delicate and I think much more sometimes intimate rather than, you know, if it's a film, sometimes, you know, if it's a door, uh, doors have a lot of power in terms of how you cut them, but, you know, sometimes there's easy sounds to just cut for a film and um, people will believe it, but theater, it's, it's got to try pretty hard. And so I, I guess the delicate kind of way um, of approaching sound is one way that I, I think that has made me different. Um, and, and probably that young ex- that experience in theater really really it sounds like it really drew you in to to like sound design and stuff like that. Yeah, I mean, I I really liked. I mean, I I I always say, um, you know, when I get asked like, how how did I get into sound? It's I always mention that my parents had like an old Yamaha keyboard, mm-hmm. and it had like individual like you know pitch bending, and uh, you know I could kind of like filter out sounds and stuff like that, and I always enjoyed that a lot in terms of I could like manipulate the sound and how I could manipulate the sound. And I could make, you know, the sound of the, uh, you know, very 
crude sounding dog bark on the keyboard, you know, sound lower or higher. Right, right. And you can you can play with the pitch and yeah. things and um but anyways, as, as an I guess I guess the thing is being an actor has brought an interesting take on being a sound designer because um I I can I can I think a lot about how something feels to me in in terms of emotion because as an actor that's the biggest thing is you gotta the biggest thing they teach you is listening and um how it makes that character feel how would the character react so it brings a lot to how the sound sound is an is an immeasurable part of any any kind of production because it, it it's almost like it can be a character in itself for sure yeah and um and and utilizing that bringing bringing that like you said, you know, what, what that particular character needs in that moment, bringing the, the exact sound, the right kind of sound design to that makes all the difference in the world. It can change, it can totally change the perception of how people, just the words that, that are emoted in that scene can totally be different based upon the choice of music. <laughs> the, the yeah, Amazon. yeah, totally. And uh, so, um, I know I know when you were on the um show before, which has been a while back, um here on Savannah on Film, you you had uh you were work you had an album or two out. I don't know if they saw yeah. albums or MP3s or what, you know. Yeah. Uh, uh have you dabbled any more in, in any of that or um yeah, so but last time I was on the show, I had actually just put out an album, like I think literally like a week before the interview. Which is pretty good. I mean, I I literally I, I thought about it after I was kind of preparing for the episode and I was like, oh my gosh, I forgot about that. But yeah, it was really interesting and and uh you know, you you can go ahead and tell people about it if you'd like to or or <laughs> or whatever. No, I mean um you were playing with I a was interesting sounds there. Yeah, I mean, I, my biggest thing was uh, I've always, I, I mean, this will be very easy for people to, if they listen to my music, very easy for people to figure out. But my favorite band is Nine Inch Nails. <laughs> and so trust me, me saying that and then you listening to music, uh, it, you'll probably pick up on that. But yeah, uh, but industrial music um, is always been really interesting to me because it kind of combined. I mean, it's a sound designer's genre, I like to say, because a lot of it came from uh, kind of the idea that uh, in the early 20th century that people had that like, you know, what is music? Is music sound? Is it just sound? Is all sound music? And industrial music kind of has that ethos, but kind of that nice little edge and um, well, it feels cool sometimes. So in line with that, I, it reminds me of a story that my father once said, and uh, when he was young, and my father was a World War II generation, so his father, my grandfather, he, um, my, um, my dad would listen to like Johnny Mercer and stuff like that, and um, yeah, and and he would say, well, you know, Johnny Mercer's music, a lot of it is like, kind of like talking in it. And that's that's what my grandfather yeah, yeah, would say. Yeah. That's not. And literally, when he came up every turn of the century, um, 1900s, I guess, or whatever, around there, I don't really know what the music, what they probably really didn't think about music. You know, you're busy trying to get water from the well or whatever you were doing. Yeah, yeah, I don't yeah. know. But he's like, that's not real music. That's just talking. <laughs> you know, it's it's funny how taste, you know, change totally. over time. And, you know, if you say nine inch nails now that, you know, that can be considered almost, I don't want to want to call it like, uh, <laughs> what do you call music when it's like past it's, it's, it's prime. It's like, um, I guess you could say um, date, maybe you could say dated if you want, but I guess I want to say like, you know, like, like, like when I remember when I got to a certain age and then songs that I still considered rock is they, they can call it adult contemporary. And I'm like, what? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, like you that. think how far ago, long ago the nine inch nails was i mean i mean this you know did a lot but you know like when they were really hitting it that's that's a while ago I yeah mean, i mean nine like 94 i would say is like their like their, absolute um yeah i mean that's when people most know them i mean they released their most popular album and stuff that being said i i'm a very firm believer that they've I mean, they, they've been doing I mean, Trent Reznor and Atticus Ross have done a lot of wonderful scores, and they he they have moved, um, which they are Nine Inch Nails uh, now, 
um, they moved on to, you know, doing a lot of wonderful music composition for right. like social, the social network and um, the Watchmen and uh, I mean, a bunch of other stuff. And they, I think they've really adapted to the times. And I think in one way, um, they used to be, you know, the angry 20 sums in the 1990s. And now they're the million dollars you know, angsty. It's, yeah, it's yeah. hard to be angsty when you're, 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 you've got a mansion and, you know, and all yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. All these property but, um, taxes this, this, this morning. Yeah. <laughs> but now they're just angsty 50-year-olds. So, yeah. Um, <laughs> but, uh, but no, I mean, it's, it's, but yeah, I mean, I understand what you're trying to say. Yeah. So, um. So you do sound supervision, sound design, and editing and mixing for um, in uh, like re-recording and stuff like that with uh, Ryan Sullivan Sound. So um, mm -hmm. you, as as it says here, let's work together to bring your vision to life through the power of sound. I like that. Um, you. you worked on um, well, one of the favorites of mine. It was a lot of stuff that you've done that i'm interested in and one of them of course was odyssey a star wars story <laughs> Thank you. yeah had its big red carpet debut yeah in, yeah in savannah and the lucas uh, there yeah yeah and um i know that probably seems like a a lifetime ago to you it seems like yeah like it's pretty far. Person, doesn't it you know yeah if, when you look back over stuff like that in some of your earlier stuff i know we all we all do it stuff we started early on and, and i'm not saying odyssey particularly but um do you cringe at some of the things you did that you thought that this was the way sound was and now you're you're out in la you've gotten a bigger world experience how is that has that changed how you perceive sound or what you think is a, appropriate or you know yeah, I would say, uh, I would say definitely. <laughs> I mean, I, I still think, you know, I'm very proud of Odyssey and I yeah, yeah. still think it sounds pretty, pretty good, but, uh, you know, I'm like, you know, it's, it was so long ago for me. Uh, it's like a lifetime and now. Yeah, it's like and asking, now you about, it's asking you about like, so how was grade school? You know, <laughs> you know, yeah, uh, totally. so long ago, you know, <laughs> the world moves so fast now. It's, it's, you know, um, we move on to other things. Um, can you talk about, and, and I don't know if, if you're able to talk about this because, um, and if I'm incorrect on this, uh, we hadn't talked about Mercy or have we? The, the short. Oh, we, we have not. No, we haven't not talked about Mercy. Um, can you talk about Mercy? It's a, it's in post-production. Yeah. Well, actually that's, I it's, it's, it's an IMD post-production because it's, I finished that uh, like literally like two years ago. Cool. Or no, like a year ago, I would say. Uh, but it's like, I don't think whoever was running the IMDb has changed it. Okay. But, um, okay. So it was, um, okay. <laughs> well, I just, yeah, no, no worries. Yeah. I was assuming that was, I guess. Yeah. Is, in, is it an IMD purgatory? So uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. From 2017. Um, <laughs> well, everything has the little, like, do the current events, you know, such and such. Yeah. Yeah. You know, totally. a lot of films now, you know, COVID messed up a lot of stuff. That was pre COVID, but um let's see uh what is um i'm not going to ask you to pick favorites here but maybe i am was there one project or one scene from from something you worked on recently that that just really where you realized you were at that next level is there something like can you give me give us an example of maybe something that you worked on recently that that have you ever amazed yourself like you've created and you're like wow that was just spot Pretty on cool yeah um yeah i i would say there is um it was for a project when the podcast series mm -hmm. um called the left right game and i think it's episode five or six and in the episode i mean this is going to be weird to to explain without context but um in the episode, there's this monster-esque kind of thing, but the monster only 
conveys like sound or only you know the the thing of how you hear because it's a podcast series so mm-hmm. there's no visual uh, mm-hmm. obviously and so the way that it said in the script was like one sentence which was this you know the monster walks towards them you know in the sounds of cars so that all the monster roar the monster footsteps the monster is like this weird kind of supernatural uh car monster i guess you could say i mean it sounds i'm making it sound pretty lame but um but it's just (laughs) not but um but so um so for 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 that i spent like one i i had edited because my job on that was sound editor um and did some sound design but main sound designer was once again matt yokum and um and so on that day i was like cool i'll I'll take my shot at this and you know matt was like yeah go ahead and you take your shot at making this monster thing and so i had um just been really hype and very um uh pumped up because i had just built a modular synthesizer Okay. Uh, which is could be a whole different topic to go into, but um, go into all of these, um, you know, modules and sound effects, mod- in effects. And so, okay, cool. It's a car monster. And so I basically spent a day, a uh, day and a half, I would say, just right. sourcing all these sound effects of like engines, of car crashes, of tire squeals and stuff like that. And then kind of, uh, using my modular synthesizer and uh, some other tools and stuff mm-hmm. to basically construct this monster and like play it on a keyboard. So, you know, I can have it growl and it can kind of twist its tone in terms of its growl um, if I play it right or if I twist a knob right. Um, and then I made, you know, the footsteps from, you know, basically just really distorted kind of car crashes and really you know basically crafting it to be its own unique kind of thing and uh and i think what really cemented to me was the fact that i had done a good job is when matt was like uh he was like dude this is this is crazy like this sounds so like you should give yourself a pat on the back like it's this is top level um kind of stuff and and uh one of the the post the, the the sound supervisor um the i guess sorry the sound consultant um i i don't mean to cut you off but we've got to kind of end the show here for the radio oh, so, no so yeah so that, that's an incredible teaser to come to youtube and check us out on savannah on film and, and what is the podcast we're talking about again uh the left right game by q code productions uh, well i want to thank you ryan sullivan uh for being here uh you can find him at ryan sullivan sound.com And please come on over to um, YouTube and we'll have uh, the video watch party. I promise we're going to continue that, but we're going to have to close it out for the radio show here at WRUU. And thank you, Ryan, for being here, for being a part of Savannah on Film and uh, coming back. And and, and, and y'all don't go anywhere. We'll see you on YouTube, okay? (laughs) All right. Thanks. Bye. You have been listening to another episode of Savannah on Film, where we give a voice to the Savannah film community. Please like our Facebook page, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and follow us on Twitter. This program was originally broadcast on 107.5 FM in Savannah, Georgia, and worldwide on www.wruu.org. Join us next time for more intriguing insights into the vibrant Savannah film community here at Savannah on Film. And we're back. Um, I'm sorry. I'm sorry to cut you. No, no worries. No I worries was looking at, at the time. I was into the Stand story. On. Just, uh, that's all good. Uh, just you know, for editing purposes. But um, welcome. If you're if you're here, we're projecting into the future. Welcome. It's Saturday night. Um, 
And uh, we're talking to Ryan Sullivan from Los Angeles, California, the other side of the world. <laughs> he, yeah. And uh, he's from uh, Ryan Sullivan Sound. Um, his friends call him Sully. Yes. And um, anyway, he's a um, sound editor, sound designer, re-recording mixer. Um, you have Ryan Sullivan Sound, which is your, your, your business. And um, I want to get back on the talking to one of my favorite things, uh, which we, we, we got into there. We were talking about podcasts that you, you've done sound for. Mm -hmm. uh, we're talking about the left, right game podcast. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah, okay. So I want to let you continue your story. So you were creating sound for this car like car monster, supernatural kind of thing. Yeah. And, and so you said you got really good kudos, you know, the, the, the proverbial uh, pat on the back for, for yeah. what you did there. Um, is there any more of that that you were going to say that I didn't mean to cut you off there? So. Yeah, no. Um, I mean, what I guess what really, you know, Matt being really impressed meant, uh, I mean, means a lot and meant a lot to me. Um, but our sound consultant, um, Will Files, who's a massive, uh, massive success of, you know, um, of being a, a sound artist in LA here. Mm -hmm. um, and he, you know, Matt showed him some of my stuff and Will was like, yeah, this, you know, he's really good. You know, this is, this is really it's impressive really and really great. <laughs> and um, I guess that, that really like, I remember, just i was like i got that message and i got up from my um got up from my uh chair and i was just like cool <laughs> i was just like yes I yes. yes um but awesome. it, yeah it meant a lot because I, I spent a lot of time you know creating everything and and really proving i guess to myself that like hey i'm a sound designer i i can create stuff you know, I can create an entire character from scratch and I can kind of, you know, make it unique. And and so uh, I guess the big news of Left Right Game is so the podcast series uh, happened. And then shortly after that, well, actually during the process of that, uh, mm -hmm. Amazon bought the the rights to Left Right Game to then it's now going to be turned into an Amazon series. Wow. So, um, it, it, so hopefully, uh, you know, hopefully that's in the future. Um, I can only I mean, hope. Are but, you, are you part of that or do you know yet or? Uh, no, I, I, I'm, no, I, we don't know yet. It's still in development in terms of, you know, converting because it originally started as a internet post, a, a what call a no sleep, which is basically like an, a horror kind of, um, story that gets posted on uh, Reddit. Um, dot com and and people really liked it and then it got picked up at XQ code to do a podcast and then he got uh, sold um, by to to Amazon to pick up for an Amazon series and so it's still in development in terms of um, phenomenal that's like really phenomenal that's <laughs> fantastic yeah so uh, hopefully that's in the future but I, I guess the thing that I'm most uh, what makes me feel the best or i guess is even if i don't get to do it um is that someone uh is gonna be going off of you know some of the sound effects that i created some of the sound design that i you know spent a lot of time on and that that feels really nice to me it, so. well when it was sold i guess you don't really own those sound effects per se i mean you don't really yeah i mean i don't know it. yeah I, i'm not sure the nitty-gritty of terms of of yeah i guess because now it kind of like belongs to the property uh intellectual property but um no i mean i don't know i mean if in terms of like those the, the library that i like kind of created for that monster like i uh, that's mine like that's my stuff but um right. but but i mean yeah because i mean you know if I get to do it, if someone else gets to do it, it's just really cool to be like, okay, cool. They're going to be referencing something that I did. Um, wow. And so I learned a lot about that, um, about that uh, project. Cause that started in December, uh, like early December 
of my senior year and that went until june Mm -hmm. of that year um so it was a very long process but throughout that i you know did school i was in school still and um and uh it was cool it 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 was weird to and it was really awesome to be you know the one person not in los angeles working on the podcast um but it was really cool to it feels you know it, it felt like i was uh i guess you could say like moving up in terms of it felt like i you know this is my like first you got, you huge leveled project <laughs> you totally leveled up on that yeah one. um it was like my first huge uh project and i learned in an immense amount of knowledge and what's really cool mm-hmm. and if you go listen to it is uh we worked with dolby uh, laboratories to use the dolby atmos system to uh make a biaural mix of it so uh wow. so and it was the, the whole like beta and everything like that and in the new podcast series i'm doing right now is the same thing um but yeah, so if you go For listen those to those who it, don't know what what that is, that's more the kind of yeah, it really makes you feel like you're hearing sound kind of yeah, it's a spatial or, audio. Um, yeah, sure. Uh, so you know, if you listen to it and and someone uh, there's definitely in the second episode someone like whispers into your ear and it really sounds like someone's really whispering into your ear. It's not just you know stereo where you'd like you hear it on the left side no it's it sounds like it's behind you so so you you created the sound you created that all of that but it's how how they mixed it in with that system so was it like any extra type or or of equipment that you needed to achieve those those sounds or is it just in how it's kind of mixed it's it's kind of how it's mixed um yeah so i mean how i act what i do is in pro tools what i work in is it already has like a dolby atmos um kind of workflow built into it so i just like basically hit the button on that and anything that i cut in you know anything that i add to the session um you know it will then get converted into the dolby atmos format and matt um will mix it um into it being biaural and so when you listen to it that you can really get that uh dolby atmos experience you're totally in it yeah yeah you totally get that and um is this is this the um is it still available at uh qcodemedia.com yeah i mean it's it's available quite literally i mean it's you know it's the yeah it's it's the whole podcast thing of uh Okay. You can find it literally anywhere that podcast. Where else you so, find the podcast? Yeah. <laughs> exactly. So. Cool. Um, well, that, that's that's fantastic. Uh, I'm like really happy for you on that. That's awesome. Thank you. Um, yeah. Let's talk about Ghost Tape podcast. Can we can we talk about that? I don't, I don't want to spoil too much of anything. Yeah. No, <laughs> yeah. no, no. Yeah. And that's that's also wherever podcasts are found. Mm-hmm. Uh, wherever you get your podcast. So what is Go- Ghost Tape Podcast about and what what special things did you do for this podcast? Yeah, so uh, Ghost Tape is actually going on right now. I mean, to the left of my screen right now is actually my computer and with the Ghost Tape, uh, one of the episodes. And um, but uh, so it's an active, I'm actively working on it, but they have um, every Monday we release a new episode. Um, this is also again with Q Code, same people who did Left Right Game. And um, so it is about uh, Tessa Dixon, who is a young uh, army recruit that goes into the army to figure out about her grandfather's death, um, which was ruled as a suicide. Um, but she starts to unravel things and she finds this tape. Uh, and this tape features a really wild um, recording of, of what it sounds like uh, of um, American soldiers in Vietnam, basically like committing war crimes uh, in in the Vietnam War. Yeah, it's it's, it's a so bit it's quite serious. Yeah, and it's 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 interesting because um, this tape is real um, in terms of it's the the Operation Wandering Soul was a Vietnam Army operation to make a tape based on what the Vietnam. Uh, folklore uh, of the wandering soul which is this um 
spirit that basically warns people um, and consumes people's souls. <laughs> and and basically the army made this tape to then play to um, to the enemy to scare them that, you know, uh, that what they were doing was useless. And it, it, it was used as a psychological kind of weapon to scare the enemy. Yeah, um, psychological warfare. I mean, I've heard of, I've, I've heard, um, I know that our military has used that. Um, I think in Iraq war, they did that, you know, it's like, yeah. you know, I don't know, it might've been guns and roses or something at the time. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. Broke them to the jungle for like 12 hours straight, you know, yeah, yeah. on 12. <laughs> <laughs> you know yeah yeah totally christopher nolan brought in an orchestra yeah yeah it's just a christopher nolan film for <laughs> on repeat yeah. um but that's what it's based on and and so and so it's a kind of a supernatural horror podcast because this tape um you know tessa dixon says she's like kind of this tape is very supernatural kind of uh elements to it and you know and there's an actual ghost and there's a whole conspiracy and the kind of the entire time throughout this series is is text Dick, tessa dixon right is she wrong is she crazy um but it takes place kind of between interactions of um between a uh, a psychologist um whose character is oscar and tessa and talking about it and uh it's really interesting I it's recommend like it. Something that needs to be picked up. You know, this is like another um, one of those murder podcasts or something. You know, yeah, like yeah, really, or serial or whatever was big. I don't know what's big. Oh, now. Limetown stuff like that too. Yeah, yeah. fascinating. So, 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 what were some unique things about that particular uh, working on um, ghost uh, tape podcast? What What are some of the uh, What are some were there anything, was there anything unusual or anything new that you explored in, in creating sound for that or? Um... Yeah, I mean, uh, the biggest thing is that this takes place on primarily on a military base. And so a lot of our time, because once again, uh, Matt Yoakum is my supervisor and sound designer and re-recording mixer and I'm sound editor um, and um so a lot of time we talked about making this feel really big in terms of, you know, the bass is encompassing. So, you know, even when you're hearing the, you know, Tessa and Oscar talking, they're still in a military base. So you might hear that there's distant gunshots to the right say, of you. I was going to say, and you, you might hear, you know, maybe a platoon marching by or something. Yeah. Or, you're going to hear a, a distance uh, like uh, cadence the, call. Uh, yeah you know, um, very interesting because th those would be like the subtle things that I, I would listen for, you know, I would be like, okay, if they're on a military base, you know, and you don't hear anything, you know, that would say yeah. like a, you know, a, a chopper flying by or in the distance or something would be interesting. Is this also, um, the same, like on the left, right is the Atmos, is it still? Yes. The same? Yeah. It's the same by all, um, once again, uh, same biaural way of uh, encoding, I guess, the audio and, and listening to it. So yeah, if you listen to it with headphones, which is highly recommended to, um, it's kind of the way you get to hear that spatial sound. Right. Um, you'll hear, you know, how it sounds different. It sounds really real. It's almost like they're actually there. Um, well, it's, it sounds as if they are there. But um, right. and it really puts you puts you in like you know, if you hear the footstep yeah left there probably is somebody to your left yeah and, and I mean there's an incredible amount of time spent trying to you know I mean Q code's whole uh, aesthetic and whole kind of way of doing their shows is they want to be movies uh, without that's visuals funny you say that because I was thinking while you were talking about Ghost Tape podcast that sounds like a very interesting film. That I, I would definitely go see and yeah yeah no yeah, totally I hear it you know um um i know there was one there was one pot podcast i was listening to and i never got through it unfortunately because i have so many that i, I listen to in different types and yeah there's so it, many in the world there was that's one that sure. uh, rami malek was in um uh blackout blackout and i started listening to it and i never got through it i got lost in the shuffle or something yeah gotten away and, and and i was like okay this is interesting 
it all brings me back to, in a way, these kind of storytelling podcasts. I think of um, War of the Worlds. Yeah, in, like radio plays. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And, and, you know, this is a newer generation and with definitely better technology, but, you know, doing that same thing. And it's basically, it's a film, I guess you could look at it, it's to, it sounds totally like, a, like you said, it's a, it's a film, but without the picture. Yeah. But yeah, it's, a, it's literally without the picture. And so you're, you're having to, it's kind of like, let's say if, or I'm thinking of it as, let's say if you had your eyesight and, you know, you lost your eyesight, a person lost their eyesight, you know, sometimes your hearing is increased. So maybe it's, you know, you have to compensate because you're in this audio only format. You, you're definitely compensating for what people don't see because it's not, a, you know, it's just an audio podcast. But yeah. It, it gives you that spatial sound. Now, I know, I know that there used to be a thing, and it, it was a bit of a fad. It was the early 90s, um, late 80s, early 90s, um, Q sound that um Q sound i have never it, heard of it. it was in music um there were a few artists that used it and uh and it was more it was a different type of like surround sound or stereophonic mm. kind of sound and uh, i know madonna used it on on one track that she did um and then sting he used it on on, on one of his albums um <sighs> But it's it was an interesting sound, and I I don't know I I don't know why I thought of that, but I remember it being just more than just you know like stereophonic sound. It was you know it almost sounds a little bit like what you're doing now, but I'm sure this I always say it wrong. I want to say binaural, and I know that's wrong. <laughs> Bi- no, yeah, it's binaural. Bi- yeah, it's yeah. Sometimes a bit hard to say. <laughs> I, I totally I get always, that. I get tripped up on it, but um but the bioral sound is is definitely you know leaps forward i'm sure but um i don't know why i thought of that but um just you know that sounds so fascinating because you know you're really you really truly are telling a story with sound i mean that you have to in in yeah format and so it's just even it's it's really enhancing it's almost like a 4d experience without the visual yeah but, totally and it's it's both amazing, but it's also I think that's where the greatest uh, um, difficulty comes because I have to sell and tell the audience and give them so much information with just using sound. So, you know, when someone's walking, you know, in a film, when someone's walking and someone stops, okay, cool, I can visually see that. I know when the sound stops, you know, it stops. But in in sound, how do I convey? you know, someone's slowing down, someone's pacing, you know, because they're frantic. They're breathing, they're yeah. know, different and things, the movement of their body, you know. Sound plays a huge part into, and especially how I curate, I would say, how I, what sounds do I pick? You know, if someone is pushing a door um, in the podcast, I have to really think about how they're pushing that door. Are they angry? Are they, you know, and stuff like that, just because I need to convey so much information and emotion to someone without them seeing anything and they can picture it in them in their heads of what they think is going on. If it's not, if it's not done in the right way with the mood, with the, the um, feeling that that character is going through at that moment, you know, then it won't, it won't match. Yeah. I can, yeah. I get what you say on that. Um, it's 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 it sounds so fascinating this i mean really to me this sounds very extremely interesting this sounds like this is even more could be more challenging than actually doing a film i mean to actually in some ways i feel like you really have to bring your a game to this and it really probably gives you i mean a door is going to sound pretty much the way a door is going to sound a screen door is going to sound a little bit different yeah than you know a regular i guess wooden door or whatever in a house or something or a door that has a creak and you know or something like that but or versus like a car door would sound totally different and um but have do you do you ever try to employ some techniques or or, or do you have that levity where you can do that where you subvert the expectation of what 
of, of what that sound is, or, or I guess you still have to be true to the sound of like, let's say a, what a door is, but mm-hmm. is there, do you mix in other things like very subtly to give that door a bit of its own kind of character, if that makes sense? I don't yeah, uh, totally. In, in terms of, especially in the, yeah, in the podcast um, and especially in Left Right Game as well, there is a lot of things there's, there's, I, I know one thing specific, particularly is so we have in left right game there's a cb radio that they constantly pick up and put down right and we every time in the script it always say you know there's this nice click that sounds to signify they're picking up the radio and so a lot of time i was like you know okay i was like looking through my library and stuff and like eh, it's a click it's you know right. eh. so what it actually came out to be is someone opening a cassette box um it's got that nice little like uh, loose plastic I can, character. I can hear it now, yeah, I can hear it as I don't have yeah. a cassette anyway. I'm looking around for a cassette. <laughs> but but yeah, um that, that distinctive sound, yeah. But um, but it came out to be because it has this nice like uh, plastic kind of character to it. And uh how do I, it has more um it's more interesting, it's much more interesting to listen to. And I and I think that's the biggest thing when it comes to uh, doing these podcasts is uh, what what is a really interesting sound to listen to and how how you know because in a film if I open a door um, just normally you know cool put put a door sound in there I always come back to doors talk a lot about doors but um, but in but in the podcast um, yeah I mean I sometimes I go to a lot of really unconventional ideas um, and the way that sometimes you have to think about it is what is the like action that is going on right. so uh and, and so also it, a reaction yeah totally yeah yeah so um is it is it can it be a bit of a rabbit hole like you could like spend i could see sp- spending hours upon how this particular door is going to sound or how this <laughs> radio and you fl- and, and you maybe layer on too many levels and have you ever like had to stop yourself and say, okay, that's a little bit too much because, you know, you're going so deep until you're almost going to a microscopic level as it were, yeah. what that sound should be. And you're, you know. Yeah, totally. I mean, that, that actually happened to me literally yesterday in terms of I was cutting a, trying to, trying to put in the sound of someone falling on the ground, but it's a, a linoleum ground. And next thing I know, I have, literally 11 sound effects just for one fall and i was like okay this is this you is too much say, well i've got to go and find a floor and fall <laughs> i gotta fall on it and you know surprisingly i had to search pretty hard to find a like someone falling on a linoleum uh floor yeah. um but but the thing is that goes into it is okay how do i convey that it's that they know what the surface is so linoleum okay cool has like a kind of a plastic texture so i need like a plasticky uh, sound right. how do i convey that the most okay someone's shoes hitting the ground um because you kind of get you can then kind of hear the, like plasticky the texture of it. no totally i mean that's the thing yeah. it's, it's heels it's, it's like, going to be like less more opens up a pandora's box to well okay yeah now, yep and then you know what brand of shoe is it a hard a soft sole is it a hard sole yeah is it a heel High heel it a heel it makes much sense yeah. Make, yeah 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 oh, yeah so that's that's what's fascinating about 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 that i i would think um, is, is is like you could totally i could see getting lost in that and uh it's like i know i know when i, I do like podcasts um when i work on my podcast i used to spend hours upon hours editing I would edit so much until I would like over edit, but it's like, mm-hmm. this has to be a masterpiece. This one episode and I'm talking about, I don't know, whatever film or whatever, you know, something. Yeah, yeah. And then after a while, I'm like, okay, you know, you get a certain level of quality and you learn to, in recording a podcast is, you know, it's different because, you know, you learn, you learn how to do it better. So you don't have to fix it in post because we never want to hear from fix it in post. Um, but, um, you learn better techniques over time and doing stuff like that, at least I have. And, um, so when you're, um, like there's a such thing as over editing. And, and so, you yeah. know, to a point where you're like, that's fine. You know, 
I said, um, a couple more times than I normally would, or I, you know, you know, but, but, but I don't know. Some, sometimes I, I hear things, not as much, but sometimes you can hear things that are so pristine and so edited that they don't sound real. It takes the, the realness out of it. And, you mm-hmm. know, that spontaneity, like, you know, I mean, I would be down to the breaths on it because I used to have, I used to have like several people on the podcast a long time ago and I had all these amps hooked up and different, you know, mixers and stuff. And yeah, you know, and then you've got the noise coming in and you, what's your noise floor? And you, you know, it's, and uh, yeah, it gets, yeah, they can get crazy. And you just like want to pull your hair out, but you know, there's, but it, it's totally, it's totally, um, I can see where you, 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 one can really put their heart and soul and really put your, put your stamp on it. And also, um, mm-hmm. wow. Um, what, what have we not talked about that you wanted to touch on? Is there anything that we haven't mentioned? Uh, I don't know. I, we've got, I mean, I think all the most recent things that I've been working on have been touched or have worked on have been touched on. Um, what advice would you give to people coming up in, in the industry that would like to follow the path of Ryan Sully Sullivan? <laughs> um, I actually been thinking about this a lot because um I, I wanted to convey as someone who's been thankfully and very uh, happy to have had very constant work uh, through the pandemic mm-hmm. um, and, you know, kind of ending school by literally by on the other side of a laptop, you know, thousands of miles away because <laughs> um, I was already in L.A. Hey, I'm and, in L.A. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah. And like, you know. Uh, so I was thinking, like, what are what are things that I've learned in the past couple of months that I wish I could have told, you know, myself, or wish I could have said. Um, and I think uh, I think the one thing is is for sure, and it's you know, it it sometimes seems like a luxury, but it's not. But is to really and honestly study and kind of listen to your favorite what what are the most interesting sounds or what what's the most interesting song or you know the most interesting movie uh, sound wise Mm -hmm. and why do you like it and what about it makes it yeah what about it makes it um interesting like what makes a hitchcock film yeah and like how does it work because the thing is is whether you don't, you know, when you're working on a project and you're thinking, oh, I'm doing this method like this sound designer, it's not, it's not that. It's the terms of, um, I mean, maybe it could be like that, but for at least for me, and um, I think for for some other for other people as well, it's more about learning what sounds good, and what sounds interesting, and what sounds, uh, what conveys a lot, you know, the information to someone. Like for instance, there's a, one of the one of the films that I love and I look up to is the film First Man uh, by oh, yeah. uh, Damien Chazelle, and the sound work on that is incredible. And there's a point in the beginning where they have the counter in the spaceship and it's clicking down, 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 and the sound of that is actually someone going through a deck of cards. And so, oh. yeah. So, and the thing is, is Oh, of course like it's it it's it <laughs> has a wonderful character to it uh and the sound has a wonderful character to it uh it is exactly the what i what i kind of mentioned earlier where you start looking for the action you know if you're going through a deck of cards it's the same thing as a meter going down it's the same uh kind of action and so uh you can take a lot away from that in terms of it's thinking about the uh the action of a sound and kind of the basis of what of a sound um so it it's it's easy to get hung up in the weeds of i need this thing to to be a sound designer or i need that to do it the sound designer not at all because all plugins and all effects are at the end of the day are ways of basically conveying uh of helping a sound convey something. So if I want something to sound really harsh, I can use distortion. Or if I want it to sound very swimmy, I can use like a phaser or a flanger. Um, sorry, this is again way too specific, but no, no, I guess no, the, I'm enjoying this. <laughs> this I guess the thing is, is, um, is 
is that, uh, you know, you can get caught up in what I need to be a sound designer. And all you really need to be at the end of the day is have a wonderful ear, have a really keen sense of, of what you're hearing and how it sounds. Uh, definitely start to think about music and sound being in the same light, because I think that brings an interesting kind of mindset in terms of, you know, how do I edit things? Because if there's one thing I've learned being a sound editor, it's that I edit more like a musician than I thought I would. I edit a lot depending to on rhythm and I edit and, you know, uh, put sound effects that are tonal. So like a car, for instance, a car is a lot of noise, but the thing that we really want to hear as an audience is that tonal sound of the engine. Uh, right. And so stuff like that is, is really looking at the basics of what, um, what the sound you are hearing. I, I guess this is pretty like in the clouds in terms of it's very, uh, in some ways esoteric, but, um, but I, I guess, to, to it's it's really easy to get hung up on i need this to be a sound designer i need that to be a, you know sound editor whatever and you know you do need gear to some extent of in order to help convey your ideas but the the biggest thing and the most important thing is uh be a really good listener and figure out what you can bring to the table that makes uh the sounds you create or make or edit uh unique to how you convey it to other people so yeah wow. i guess that's uh no, no that's <laughs> that's a fantastic answer and I, I totally i totally get what you're saying there um so i've lost my train of thought because I was, I was really deep in what you were saying there and i was no worries. Uh, yeah um have you thought i thought about this while, while we're you know talking here have you ever thought um of teaching because you know the you were once a, a jedi apprentice and now you're <laughs> you know maybe a master jedi you know, say no, i'm, I'm still i'm always learning that's for sure but um but, i mean i don't think we ever stop learning i oh I, totally i'm always learning i'm i I think it's an ongoing process. If you stop learning, it's a very bad sign. Right. But... I mean, you get stuck in a certain way in a certain time period yeah. of your skills and you don't allow yourself to let new things come in and, and permeate who you are and, and elevate you to that next level. If you know, if you're not open to it, but um, I can maybe see you, you know, have you thought of putting together like maybe with your Ryan Sullivan sound, uh, company, have you thought about maybe putting together some tutorials or, you know, that you could put out? Maybe you could charge for, you know, yeah. uh, a, a <laughs> nah, I wouldn't of charge it. Sound design. Yeah, yeah. Or, you know, or, you know, even if you don't charge, you know, that's that's even more philanthropic, I think, if you don't charge. But, you know, I, I mean, do you see a path to one day maybe taking what you've learned and what you're still learning and kind of passing that on maybe a, maybe ryan sullivan on you know sully sound or something I yeah, don't, yeah, yeah on youtube or whatever I don't um yeah of course i mean it's always been something that i've thought about since high school of i would really love to teach um i'm a huge history buff and the history of sound design uh for film and for animation for everything has is a really interesting one um in a really interesting art form that doesn't really get i mean it's it's you know it doesn't really get talked about a lot of the times when someone asks me you know okay what do i do i'll be like oh i'm a sound editor or a sound designer they're like oh what is what's that uh, oh you record sound oh, okay I, I have an iphone um, yeah yeah i make films no <laughs> <laughs> um but it's it's one of those things where it's so i it's you know uh we live in a very like visual uh focused society and you know world and sometimes sound kind of gets put in as like you know a secondary sense um but i think what's really interesting and what i would love to teach is the fact that it's it's definitely not and it's just as meaningful and um 
and yeah, the history I'd say it's sound. like 60 40 people want to say it's half the sound is half i'm like it's yeah. 360 i'm i'm biased that way. <laughs> you know no totally I, i've been i've been to film festivals and uh and seen the you know the cinematography is great on this and everything oh and, yes you know, yeah. it's like oh dear god get me out of this room it's like i, I can't i can't no 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 yeah i totally get that <laughs> Yeah, um, you're disqualified. <laughs> you do not make it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I, I remember being bluntly being in a film festival, and these people were sitting literally in the front row, and they were just falling all over themselves how funny their film was. And I tried my best to watch it, but the sound was just like so it bad. Like a chalkboard, and it was like <sighs> like when the like somebody would laugh, and it would be at this incredibly loud sound. It would almost like scare you. It's like the wrong effect that they were trying to get. And I'm like, ah, <laughs> you know, that's not what they were trying to do. They were just laughing, but it was like the levels were just horrible and I, I couldn't get past it and it still haunts me today. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's, yeah. I mean, it's, I mean, they always, it's, you know, it's one thing I always say is like, it's, it's much easier to watch a film with um, good sound, but bad cinematography yeah. than it is to watch um a film with good cinematography and bad sound because there's a, there's a whole industry around that you know where you, where you have the the b and c movies or whatever you know that are yeah just really bad and and maybe the sound isn't so great but sometimes the sound is as much better than the cinematography no totally yeah there's maybe yeah. crazy cont continuity errors or something but at least the sound is you know i can hear the dialogue pretty well yeah i can hear them so. talking even though that made no sense what they just said yeah and uh uh gosh um so um you mentioned COVID 19 that's always the thing and apparently we have to talk about uh, well we don't have to talk about it but you were lucky enough uh during the pandemic to be working remotely and like you said you still worked through the pandemic i know it's it's different because the, the industry is still is starting up slowly yeah Luckily it is here and it's you know, otherwise there are productions and everybody's trying to do everything they can to, to be safe. And my concern is always the, the ultra low productions or the, the ultra low budgets or the, <laughs> or, or what I call no budget films. Yeah. Not to knock people. Cause I know everybody's got their own curve and what they're creating and, and all that. But I wonder what protocols are, are being actually met on dare I say student films, dare I say, you know, these ultra low budget films that aren't student films, you know? Yeah. How did they, you know, other than just kind of people, you know, taking their word at it, because I mean, the average cost um, is about 10% of the budget now for mm. like a, a feature film, just yeah. safety protocols. And um what are your thoughts on that? I mean, you're lucky enough, I, I guess, because you can work in a studio and, you know, you can, your work can be totally isolated and you can work, <laughs> work from your studio. Right. And yeah. And you're kind of lucky that way, but you know, the actors can't, the, not necessarily, you know, there's, there's, there's portions that, you know, you, you, the cinematography has to, you know, can't be done <laughs> yeah. via the internet, you know, or unless, <laughs> you know, yeah but, no, totally um oh. so so i mean it's it, it's interesting it's an interesting time so i mean what are your thoughts i mean on 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 getting through this time period have you have you run into any situations where you were were you ever on on set for 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 anything or just I mean, have you had any experiences on set since like the pandemic? No, I mean, I since I mostly, I mean, I, I guess since I work in post production, uh, I mean, one hundred percent of the time, yeah. I, uh, I I'm not on set. But I think how it has affected uh, my job, or how it will be affecting, because I say will be, because when the pandemic happened, everything closed down, people like me who work in this industry of, of post-production, you know, we already spend 
our entire days in a small dark room isolated from people <laughs> so it's not like you know for it's a, so nothing really changed what ha- what changed was you know some films got put on the shelf um for the time being or some stuff just went to post and so for you know for most of my time i that's why i've been able to stay so um so busy is because so much is in post stuff that already shot is in post um we're gonna um, get to the point though like there's gonna be no new content that's where i say but because the thing is is it's it's coming around uh, and I think we're starting to feel it now where, you know, we're, we're told back in May, it's like, you know, all these posts, like people, you might have a lot of jobs now, but, you know, since there's no productions come, you know, fall, there's not going to be anything to go into post because everything's kind of shut down. And so it's, I, it's, it's starting to be really true in terms of the film work, um, is starting to, I would say, start to dry out um, mm-hmm. and start to not be as present as it was back in March and back in April and May and June even. Um, and the only things, at least here in LA, that I'm, you know, that I really know of that are on uh, working in terms of sets and on production are like the, you know, very large movies. Um, right you know the they, movies that where they, they can and they can afford the the 24 hour or less turnaround on covid testing yeah totally yeah they can yeah afford tests for everyone and and even like you know when there's like a zone b zone you know so. yeah yeah and the thing is like they can afford the to quite literally shut down production at any point um you know because for for people who don't have millions of dollars um, on a production, you know, shutting down an entire production until someone's, you know, just because, you know, because someone might have COVID um, or it does have COVID, it's, you know, that can cost them the entire film. But sometimes on these films that are happening right now, it's like, you know, they already know going into that, that that could be a thing. And so they, they can take the hit. Um, so, that, so I, I think that's the thing is, I mean, what's been great um, is these, with, what's been great, I guess, with, with for, for the podcast and stuff is all these podcasts are actually being recorded remotely. So what happens is Q code will um, send uh, either, either the, if I think, you know, people will come into their studio to, to um, with minimal contact and everything, come into the studio and record, or they'll send, uh, you know, a microphone to the actor's house and, you know, get on a Zoom call and do all of the podcast recording there. Um, so it, it is. But then you, I know you think of the quality, not because we're doing Zoom right now. Yeah. <laughs> but the quality of it isn't quite perfect. Like, yeah, know, yeah. So you, you probably have, it probably presents, a, I would think, a little bit more of a challenge to to get a little bit better sound well we it's actually they they talk via zoom but not recording through zoom it's there's a whole like process in terms of you know of you know you got an ipad for your notes and everything and you know there's a whole process of how they're doing that um but i guess that's how these podcasts have been been getting done and so what's i mean i what i mean to say is uh it's good is is that they these people can still work through uh, right. kind of a sucky time yeah so. and, and 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 it's still putting out content there and you know another and, and maybe part of this too um if there is a a winner if you want to call it there's really no winners in this pandemic but if there's a brighter side like drive-in theaters i've gone mm, yeah. drive- I, I know you were familiar with Savannah area, but it's about an hour and a half to either Beaufort, South Carolina, or Jessup, Georgia, from mm-hmm. where we are here in, uh, in Savannah, where I am. Um, and we'll drive down to Jessup, and we'll, we've seen a lot of, like, films I know I would have never seen had the mm-hmm. pandemic not happened. And this is a, a really good time for smaller creators, for lower-budget films. Um, I wish Savannah had a 
some sort of dollar theater thing going, you know, I have a whole idea of if I won the lottery, what I would do with all that, Yeah. <laughs> you know, and, 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 um, and, and so, you know, Hollywood finds this way people have to have their entertainment, you know, there's only going to be so many Amazon prime shows and, yeah. and, Until you burn it. Yeah. shows and, Disney Plus, you know, is going to be so much and whatever other, you know, formats uh, or, or apps or whatever, um, streaming services. But um, yeah, I mean, we're going to seriously hit a time where we're watching, I don't know, you know, reruns of, I don't know, <laughs> of everything. Yeah. And, uh, um, you know, but maybe, maybe it's, maybe it's a good, because, because I talk with people in, in the podcasting industry, I've been podcasting for 12 years. So, I talk to people in the industry and, and then a lot of people are like, you know, this could be, this is what's interesting because when you talk about podcasts, a lot of people get into their routines, like they're going to work or they've got the 30 minute drive to work. Or yeah, yeah. Right? So they listen to, you know, an episode of, um, you know, whatever they're listening to, um, left, right game or ghost tape podcast. <laughs> to Hopefully, yeah. Or, or maybe Geek Home World or Stand On Film, who knows, you know, available wherever your podcasts are available. Um, but, uh, <laughs> but so, you know, I noticed in looking at numbers, like even on my own podcast, that the numbers just like plummeted at first on podcasts mm. because people, I think we're out of, generally we're out of their routines. And I'm hearing that in the podcast community, but people have started to come back and as I've started to venture out more and get back to work and try to get close to normal, a lot of people's stats have been coming up and, you know, I've, I've sequentially seen each month almost a massive resurgence in, 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 in what I'm doing. But um, yeah, so I think it takes us back to, um, you know, it, it is like the old radio serial kind of thing. And, and that's what, yeah. you know, I think it's, I think it's great. I just think, I think there's so much, there's so much that maybe people, you know, they're picking up on these smaller films and maybe the drive throughs drive-ins, not drive throughs <laughs> There's an idea. Drive-through movie. Drive -through, yeah. Drive yeah. I'll have fries with that movie. <laughs> but, um, you know, they're, 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 they're getting that, but, they're also hopefully discovering these these smaller films that but they're also discovering audio you know they're discovering podcasts. yeah totally you know because i remember when caught pod i was a couple years after podcasting began you know uh, i got into the game slowly and 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 just kind of trudged along and then had some massive growth and then it kind of you know it kind of weaned and then now everybody's got a podcast every corporate everyone yeah every business if you've got if you if you're a realtor you have a podcast now you know and everybody's about the monetization and the algorithm and youtube and wherever else you're at and you know it's interesting and it's it's kind of fun to see people get reinterested in podcasting and then you have youtubers versus podcasters and youtubers coming to podcasts and then considering their stuff yeah podcast, totally which it is but but podcasters are you know we're audiophiles we're you know we're we're always going to be audio you know i've expanded more into video but videos just doesn't come as natural to me as sound it comes to me naturally so you mm -hmm. know i'm always going to have an audio podcast but you know now i've got to learn to look at the camera and i'm like you know be, be you know uh, aware of things like that and you have to um it's it's interesting how technology is has changed and, and how people's behaviors their patterns have changed during covid and and in general and um um I, yeah i don't know where we go i i know we go into 2021 with the pandemic um you know it hopefully yeah we emerge out the other side of this, you know, people doing the right thing. And, and uh, I'm not going to get on the soapbox here. I, I promise not to, uh, <laughs> but uh, we've got to get, we got to do these things to get, get ahead of this virus, get ahead of this pandemic so people can get back to work because something we talk about, you know, I've talked to different people at different levels here on Savannah on film. And we've talked about, you know, now the post-production people like yourself are it's it's trickling down to you guys yeah 
and, and you know, and y'all are, I don't know how many levels, not down, but you know, in, in the chain of, of everything. And if nobody's filming anything, then there's no work for you. So it's, yeah. like, uh, I, I don't know the answer to that. I don't know how we, we just got to move forward and we got to be able to find, I think it, it makes us, makes people more creative and how we, we, you know, think how we can create new things and, you know, and, and I, don't, I don't know, I'm not sure what point I'm trying to make, but I just, I want the pandemic to be over. We all do. No, totally. I mean, you know, yeah, it's, um, I want to go to the theater regularly, not just yeah, I mean, that's, once in a while. And, you know. I think that's one of the biggest things me and my girlfriend want is just to go to the movies again. Cause uh, funnily enough is the day that it became like everything shut down here in LA, yeah. uh, like movie theaters, literally the night of it shutting down, we went to see the invisible man in theaters. I ended up seeing that twice. I loved that. That was a great movie. Loved it, which yeah. was interesting because, you know, that was supposed to be the Johnny Depp film, part of the dark universe. Yeah. And, and then it got re the script got reworked and all that. And, and I, it's going to end up, <laughs> well, we're seeing like looking at like the box office, uh, China's going to end up winning, winning the year we're on the worldwide box office. Yeah. Wow. A lot of things are, you know, tenant is probably the biggest thing next to, well, bad boys for life, maybe like the most will be the number one domestic release yeah. year. So that, that can, you know, big asterisks next to 2020. Yeah, totally. It, it's kind of like, you know, I, I think of the Oscars because the Oscars are, I'm really kind of against them having an Oscars this year. I just really kind of think, you know, you have it normally when you have it instead yeah. of an extended period, because it's going to really muddle up 2021. And I, I think that causes too much, me personally, I think it causes too much confusion. I would just, you know. It's a just, weird game, I think. It's like yeah. a weird way to rate. Uh, yeah, it's like it, it's, it hasn't been normal. So, the, it's, so having the Oscars be normal is kind of weird. Um, yeah. And the thing, the thing about it too is, you know, we were right on the cusp of the discussion of, like when the Irishman came out and Scorsese was like, well, you know, it wasn't meant to be seen on, you know, your phone yeah. to be seen. On, he had no conceptual idea, you know, that, that the Irishman would be shown that people would be watching it on their phones or their tablets. You know, he's, he's one for, yes, it should be experienced in the theater. And for most films, you know, I agree it, it should be, but, but taste have changed and, and, you know, people watch things differently and technology's advanced and, and and it's funny because streaming has become everyone's best friend during the pandemic mm -hmm. and all the lockdowns and stuff like that. And when we come out of the lockdowns, are people are they going to rush to theaters? Which, when they kind of re you know, relax things, I think a little too soon here in Georgia. Nobody's still going to the AMC. Nobody's running because all we have is like AMC, and then we have an IMAX just outside of Savannah. But. Um, mm. Yeah, not everybody's rushing back to the theater. I've gone a couple times when, in, you know, purposely gone when, you know, I know people won't be there as much. And, you know, I'm pretty much, you know, I've got my own um, hand sanitizer and everything. I'm just, you know, I'm out of the bubble just that I'm making. Yeah, sure. yeah, totally. But I, I mean, just, if... I want to kick back and I just want to eat like an enormous amount of popcorn <laughs> and everything get my Twizzlers and just watch a really good, well-sounded, you know, well, well mixed picture. <laughs> yeah, no, totally. I'm ready for my blockbusters. I, I did. One thing that did bring me out of the pandemic was uh, the empire strikes back and, and it was good to see that in theaters, but it was just, me. Oh wow. That sounds awesome. Two, two other people. And it was just, and you know, I really appreciated John Williams score because I thought, you know, take away that score and then the film is not as good it's still good no it doesn't have that emotional it doesn't and, have the emotional punch that no that that, that it needs oh well um we could probably go on forever but but I think <laughs> times because uh, i'll talk forever but um i want to thank you ryan sullivan sully for being here for coming back to span on film for spending time here 
Um, I want to speak to the people that are on YouTube that are watching this now. Welcome to Saturday night and beyond. Um, yeah. Please, please uh, subscribe to the channel. Uh, you can enable the notifications for new content. And hopefully wonderful content that you enjoyed like this. You will also give a thumbs up to on the video. It helps with the algorithm. You know, I feel like I have to. Yeah. Smash, smash that like button. Smash you know, that ring that like bell. Button. How do you want to ring that bell? Smash that like button. Yeah. And uh, do all that. And um, I'm sure we'll come up with sounds for that. And some people do have sounds on theirs. I'm not that creative. Um, but anyway, uh, thank you all for listening. And this will also be in podcast form wherever you consume your podcast. So you'll get to hear the whole thing. And um I really appreciate you taking the time out uh, from Los Angeles. Um, no worries at all. It's a and, pleasure. And uh, it's great to have you back. It's great to see how far you've come. And I, I can only imagine how far you're going to go. And uh, oh, thank you. wish you every bit of success, heartfelt success that, you know, you achieve your wildest dreams. Because I, I really feel like you're, you're going to be someone that's going to be teaching the next generation of, of people in, in your field. And I know you're, you're still learning and you're always going to be learning, but I think you, you've already hit another level and I just see you leveling up and, and I wish you all the best. Uh, Ryan. Thank you. Thank you. means a lot. And um, anyway, so thank you uh, and check out, um, and there's a shame. Yeah. Plug. Ryan, Ryan Sullivan sound. <laughs> Ryan Sullivan sound. <laughs> com. Com. It's very easy. <laughs> very easy to remember. You know? Even I can remember it, but um Anyway, so um, is there any final, final thoughts, anything you want to say, any shout outs or anything? You're like, hey, mom. No, I don't. Oh, no, I, no, I think I'm uh, I think I'm pretty good. Go listen to Ghost Tape. I, I guess that, that could be a, oh, yeah. that one. Go listen to Ghost Tape uh, on any podcast service um, that, uh, that you can get podcasts on. Uh, Ghost Tape by Q Code Productions. Uh, listen to it and preferably on headphones so you get that real right uh, nice experience oral huh? yeah uh the way we mixed it um intentionally and it makes you really put feel the sound so uh go listen to that other than that i uh and amazon if you're listening when you uh put uh the <laughs> podcast <laughs> oh, please the series um don't forget ryan sullivan okay um yeah and that's ryan Hopefully. sullivan.com <laughs> yeah. all right well, well we're gonna end it thank here. you so uh, much Thank you, man. Uh, you, you, you have a great time. And uh, thank you all for listening. Uh, here's Savannah on film. And uh, the, the video is going to end abruptly. So uh, <laughs> I, I, I never know how to end it. So it's just going to end. Uh, no worries. All right. Okay. Bye, everybody. <laughs>